Hello, everybody. Today we have Mark Gutierrez uh, from Stanford Center of Excellence. Yeah, we uh, have some questions for him lined up. We'll have some real interesting conversations. Uh, tune in and listen in, and we hope you enjoy. All right. See you guys. You've been described as the really nice director with the snazzy shades who would play really cool reggae music at lunch events. Could you tell us a little bit about Stanford Center of Excellence and what your role within it is? Sure, sure. Well, first of all, I want to just thank you and Adela for having me here and joining you with the important work that you're doing. Yeah, it's true. You know, uh, I'm a big fan of reggae music. And typically uh, when we have our student events, I love to play that music and other music, salsa tambien, and uh, just add to uh, uh, a real uh, community uh, of diversity that is here at Stanford. I've been with the Center of Excellence now for about 28 years. Um, and uh, we are at the Stanford School of Medicine. Um, our goal is to cultivate and sustain an environment that fosters the development of a diverse physician workforce uh, that is capable of addressing and eliminating uh, health inequities, particularly in this country. We want to achieve that uh, through education, uh, research, uh, patient care, and advocacy. So how do you, or how should you measure success in, in the area and the work that you do in leadership development? This, this, this area of leadership development is something that I've specialized in, and I, I teach classes in leadership development at, at Stanford uh, School of Medicine. And, and, and to answer that question, I was thinking of a quote that I heard by uh, Dr. John Maxwell, and he says, and I want to just read this to you because it's, it's a really powerful quote. It says, the growth and development of people is the highest calling of a leader. And so as leaders, you know, we create and build new leaders. That's what we're supposed to be doing. In fact, we have a word for that. It's called legacy. You know, effective leaders build legacies. They, they develop people. They encourage people. They enable them to lead. But, you know, one of the things that really excites me is when, you know, I'll have a student come up to me after my leadership class and they'll say, um, you know, I never knew I was a leader. I never thought of myself as a leader until I'm taking your class. And I now see that I can lead. Sometimes I think we have these, these thoughts that leadership is for those that are, 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 are born leaders or at a higher level or a higher position or, you know, of that nature and not realize that we have everything we need to lead. Especially now, I think the importance of of young people realizing how important it is that they take the mantle of leadership and say, yes, that I will do this because it is a choice. You don't have to lead, you don't have to say yes, but those that do and really put their heart into it, what they're really doing is making this world a better place. What motivates you to do what you do? Um, you know, I had a grandfather who was very instrumental in my life. He was an orphan. Uh, immigrated to this country from Mexico and had very uh, um, real challenges. And he, he, he felt the responsibility to help those that came from similar circumstances. And so I think I got a little bit that, that responsibility to help others from him. He, he actually founded a church and uh, I grew up, you know, helping the community, particularly the Latinx community um, and serving them. And, and I feel that's a privilege, to be honest with you, to serve my community, um, not only, you know, with the church, but through my job as well, but to, I feel the, the responsibility to really serve my brother and sister in their need. But I think that when I look back to, you know, at my experiences and I think about the many times, you know, I had someone say, you can't do that. Or, you know, I had a counselor tell me one time, you know, based on a test score, he said, you know, you shouldn't be going to college. You should be a janitor. When I think about those experiences, and there were many, um, I think to myself that I need to be an advocate for those who receive the message that you can't do it, that for whatever reason, you're not good enough. I need to, to, to help advocate and say, wait a second, who gave you that right to say that? You cannot limit the human spirit. If someone is called to go into medicine, they're called to go to medicine. Prospective pre-medical students may be interested in developing uh, leadership skills, as you were talking about. 
what skills do they need to develop to get them into medical school? And will these skills be able to translate into something later and down the road and in the medical professional world? Yeah. Uh, yes, they're going to definitely translate into the medical world. You better believe it. Uh, when you put on a white lab coat, people already look at you as a leader. Uh, the word doctor means teacher. Okay. So the fact that they call you doctor means they're already calling you teacher. Teacher is a leadership position. I would also add that students need to get involved and say yes to leadership. It can be a very intimidating thing. And indeed, I would say to you that leadership is one of the most difficult things that we can do. I mean, to think about being able to unite people from diverse backgrounds with a shared vision and to struggle for it uh, and, and want to do this, you know, uh, is a challenge. It will be one of the most challenging things we do, but it's very critical. So I would advise students, pre-med students to say first, yes, I'm gonna get involved. Yes, I'm gonna say yes to leading. I might be scared, but I'm gonna say yes to leading. I'm gonna try to make a difference. I'm gonna work with other people and incorporate their, uh, their, uh, their energies to help put this together. Also, I would advise that you have an awareness about watching people lead. Look at how they do it. What works, what doesn't work? Because it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when you will lead. You will be asked to lead at some point, particularly in medicine, you will lead. Some students have had more difficult life experiences than others. How can their experiences with adversity help them to become better leaders in medicine as physicians, as whatever healthcare workers they aspire to be? Yeah, this is a great question. I think, you know, adversity, which comes to all of us pretty much, but I think adversity uh, can really be uh, a way to really help us um, be better physicians uh, in the fact that we can relate uh, to those patients who are going through similar challenges, you know? Um, doctors who may have had to uh, battle cancer and be able to relate to their patients who are battling cancer. I find too that, you know, some of the physicians I've worked with that who come from similar circumstances have such compassion for their patients because they know. They know what it's like to lose a parent. They know what it's like to lose a child or to have a child that's sick, you know? And so I think adversity can actually be an advantage. I will also add that I think adversity is, is another benefit in the sense that it helps us focus on what we want to do. You know, it's not just putting on a white lab coat. It, it's, it's a focused effort. This is what I want to change. This is what's got to change. This is how I want to spend my time. This is how I want to take... These are the classes I want to take to focus on this. It's amazing when you go through this adversity, how it, it really gives purpose to, to your time and energies and what you want to do. So I, I know, you know, nobody wants to suffer. I get it. Nobody wants, but, 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 but it gives us a, a lens in which to view the world such that we can be motivated to change it. And, you know, you know, I mean, we've had students that are homeless, you know, I mean, they can relate to the homeless cause immediately. We've had students that have had food insecurity, you know, real food insecurity, um, and having to help them through that, but they can relate to those challenges. And to be honest with you, I think that makes for a much more effective physician. Um, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I also say, you know, we've had students who have, nev have never had any of those problems but care and are trying to learn how to serve these communities better and open themselves up to be exposed. How can I, how can I, what can I do, you know, to help this too? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that connection to humanity, I think is more real when, um, when you have an awareness or you've gone through the adversity. I think one of the biggest things that stand out to me that you said is, you know, people who are generally underserved and go into medicine, they understand the other perspective physicians that come from challenging circumstances can very much relate to those communities in a very real way. You know, it's not just, you know, take this medicine, call me in two weeks and see how things go. Right. You know, you could be dead by then, you know, and to have 
physicians that come from those communities and understand those struggles, um, I think are, 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 are ideal. What's a good book to read for those who like to read if someone wants to build uh, their leadership? Uh, that's a great question. There, there, there are so many wonderful uh, uh, leadership resources. I think I mentioned the Leadership Challenge um, that is kind of like the Bible of leadership in a way. So it's a, it's a wonderful resource because, you know, leaders in their position, they will be challenged. John Maxwell has many different um, books as well with leadership. Definitely, I would say this, that we live in a time when there's been a, a lot of research now on leadership because there, there was a time that, that, you know, people thought that you had to be a certain race to be a leader. You had to be a certain height, uh, a certain demographic. Uh, and, and, and over the course of a couple, you know, hundred years here, you know, we've, we've, we've really looked at leadership in a much deeper level and we understand now uh, better what makes people effective leaders. Um, I would also say to, to, to pre-meds, take a leadership class. There are many different types of leadership classes. There may be some at their school that they can, you know, take and knowing that this will be a skill that you will use, not if, but will use, particularly in the context of medicine. It's just a matter of when. So, you know, like we mentioned with the other earlier question, get involved, read the research, read these books, read these resources, get smart about this. Because here's the thing, you know, leadership development is really self-development. We want to say thank you, Mark, for hanging out and talking with us. Um, you're a smart guy. You're a wise guy. You have some really interesting experiences and it's really crafted you into a wonderful role model and helper. So thank you for all you do. Very, very uh, compassionate as well. And you can hear it in his voice. So yeah, I, I second what Noah said. Thank you for being here, Mark.